This is video file one for a property in Claire Morris for Tom Hughes. Okay. Now, <clears throat> before I um, so before I before I speak about the this house in particular, there's a number of things that I want to point out regarding the let's say in general the differences between traditional construction which would be a stone wall with possible lime plaster on the outside and let's say a lime render on the inside um, and then stone flags on the ground inside and then let's say just you know it might be just grass outside this would be your stone construction i want to point out like because because your house is partially stone construction i want to point out the differences between this type of construction and let's say your more uh, modern type of construction which would be a cavity wall construction so this is cavity wall construction here so first off i'll start with the stone wall it's a solid stone wall they're generally you know anywhere from 500 to, to 600 thick and they're solid they're built with a, a lime mortar nowadays people use a kind of a cement mortar but this is a, a lime mortar which is what you know old stone walls were built with and the difference between this type of wall and a modern wall is this type of construction uh, breathes now the reason i'm just explaining first of all the difference between traditional construction and more modern construction is because you're getting a lot of rising damp throughout the building and that the reason for it is because uh, there's kind of a mix of two different types of constructions the old stone and let's say the more modern um, cavity wall construction and that's creating problems so I'm going to kind of show you how to remove those problems so this is the way this type of wall works this old stone wall they breathe so basically any moisture that's in the ground will come up through osmosis it will come up capillary action come up through the walls but there's no the walls were often unfinished on the outside they might have had a, a lime render on the outside which does breathe but oftentimes they were unfinished so it breathes moisture comes up but it evaporates evaporates away so moisture does come up but it evaporates so it's not um not a major problem the wall does get wet moisture does soak into the wall a little bit but after a while it evaporates and you don't get too much uh, moisture on the inside sometimes you don't really get any worth uh, you know worth worrying about you also get water vapor coming up uh, from the ground but that just um, that should evaporate too so um, now I'm going to go on to okay so um, now I'm going to go on to a more modern construction. So the modern construction is it's a dip, it's an entirely different principle. And basically these walls they don't breathe. Uh, they're designed just to keep the water out entirely. So basically what they do is with the ground floor they'll put in see this red here shows it here that's a DPM or a damp proof membrane. It's a plastic membrane that basically just stops any moisture rising up so it doesn't get a chance to come up through the ground and it's taken in through the wall and the wall is built on top of it now the other thing that they do with the uh, generally what they do is they have a cement render and a cement render is generally impermeable uh, so it doesn't really let if it's if it's well maintained and there's no cracks it doesn't really let that much moisture through it kind of the rain just sort of uh, hits it but doesn't kind of get absorbed into it and the paint that's used on it as well is also acts as a sealant generally modern construction have a cavity there's a cavity there the cavity is tied with metal ties but the reason for the cavity is rainwater will come in rainwater will drip down the inside of the cavity and then it'll 
get forced back out and it will let's say um so that's an entirely basically an entirely different principle it keeps it keeps the moisture and that's the way most modern buildings are done so two different types of construction one keeps the rainwater out entirely and the other one lets the moisture soak in but it also evaporates and both can work well now the problem is when both of those types of constructions are combined in an incorrect way which is the problem that's existing in in your house now and that's that's one of the reasons why you're getting uh, dampness so much dampness on the inside so much rising dampness on the inside so basically what you know happened i suppose um you know maybe on your on your particular property it might have happened 30 40 years ago but somebody has come along and put a cement render on the external side of the stone walls now this is a bad idea because the rising damp that used to come up and there will always be kind of um you know moisture in the ground that will kind of continuously come up it used to come up and evaporate but now it can't evaporate because the cement render is an external barrier and a lot of the times people just put a cement render on it because they might have been you know um just an aesthetic preference for a cement rendered finish that could be painted that looked different it was more modern you know if, if all houses were done with stone then and the cement render came along they said well, we'll just kind of freshen it up and we'll put a nice bright paint color on it so uh, the cement render has trapped in moisture now it is still possible to render the outside but you have to use a lime render which can breathe and let the moisture out so the moisture that used to come up and evaporate can no longer get out so it's forced into the building and you can see the rising damp and moisture inside. Now, a lot of the times what people also do is they put down a, a new concrete floor, let's say in an older building that's been renovated, you've got stone walls, but they have uh, put in a new concrete floor, 150 thick. They put in the DPM, uh, the DPM there, damp proof membrane underneath the floor so moisture can't generally come up through the floor but all of that moisture can still go up uh, through the walls now uh, sometimes what some people do is they inject in a dpc like a liquid dpc injected into the walls but they're not a good idea we don't recommend them in general because uh, they're a bit hit and miss sometimes they work okay sometimes they don't work okay but there are better ways of dealing with the problem as i will show you so basically the rising damp comes up it can't evaporate to the outside and oftentimes it comes to the inside then what people do is they put let's say a tanking plaster on the inside which might work for a while uh, but then the moisture just goes up further to let's say a higher point and you might get a wet point up there uh, so the problem is generated by basically a breathing wall or a wall that did breathe and now it can't breathe because it's got um, a cement render and the other problem that that happens is people come along and they put down a concrete footpath now this is also a problem because you know historically as I've shown you on the other um, on the other one here you have a uh, ground here that was um, there was no concrete footpath so the ground did get wet but then as soon as it dried the ground could evaporate it could dry out now with concrete the ground will still get wet because moisture will kind of penetrate through cracks in the concrete and it will uh, it, you know the moisture will be continuously kind of moving through the ground I suppose but it can never evaporate because the concrete acts as a sealant so you might think that the concrete path uh, protects the ground from getting wet because it's kind of like a big concrete slab and the rainwater runs off but it doesn't generally work like that it generally works the opposite way so the concrete footpath um, 
it stops the ground from breathing and the cement render it also stops the wall from breathing so they work on a kind of a similar principle they just stop the area from breathing okay now the other problem that you can have is um let's say over time let's say in an in an older building that was this one is shown as brick here um but let's just say this is um an example of a problem that can happen where the ground level externally is higher than the internal ground level and that causes problems with dampness um generally the external ground should be about 150 millimeters or six inches below the internal uh, so either it was constructed like this or over time the ground has built up but that should be brought back down to create a six inch uh, drop if possible sometimes it's not possible because the foundations are so shallow uh, but in general the best thing is to reduce the ground level so that is a problem in your particular property um, now I'm just going to go on to the next page here and just talk briefly about this here is uh, so this is the way this is the way that you would deal with let's say um, this is an old stone wall now the cement render has been removed from this wall and it's been lime washed with a kind of a, a lime plaster so that's been painted on maybe a couple of coats of lime wash uh, and it, you can create any color you want it can be quite a nice uh, or you can leave it bare stone and basically in order to remove the ground water what they've done in this particular case is they've put in a french drain here around the perimeter which allows the water to it allows the water to drain away so it keeps the whole area dry now in this particular case they have actually um put the french drain very close to the building and they have left the this grass area is actually slightly higher so they've left they haven't the works that they've done have actually been very very close to the building this is one way of doing it so this is a cross section here of um, the preferred method of doing it. So, what what you would try this is now this is how you would, uh, how we would prefer to get rid of any moisture on the inside. You would create a French drain around the perimeter of the building, and that French drain should be at least, you know, or preferably you'd like to keep it a half a meter away from the building itself, from the. Uh, outside wall of the building so that we can keep away from the foundations and then you have let's say because uh, oftentimes the foundations are only 200 millimeters deep and you have a kind of a zone of influence of 45 degrees here obviously you can't go under that stone dig under that stone or you can't the trench that's dug here you can't go into this 45 degree zone of influence because you might cause settlement but this french drain here basically which you know is full of pea gravel rainwater can uh, get in you might say well rainwater can hit the ground and soak into the ground surely that will make it worse but no rainwater will get will fall uh, but it'll make its way into the drain and it'll drain away and when the rain stops it the area will evaporate and dry out and um, this will generally keep it keep the rising damp away uh, and it will solve the problem so the way to do it there is basically I suppose a three-way you know three methods for resolving the problem with dampness is to create a French drain around the perimeter of the building the other way is to make sure that the ground level is six inches lower if you can get it and the other thing that you might do is uh, remove the cement render and you know you could leave it with bare stone if you don't like the look of the bare stone then you can just you know um you can use a sort of a lime wash and uh, as i've shown like in the last drawing that's a kind of a lime wash there which it can look very well lime washes can look very well and they have a they actually kind of sparkle in the sunshine they look they can look much better than paint so those are your this is kind of this is kind of general this was a general kind of um 
generally how you would deal with the particular problems you have with your own uh, I'll get into the specifics now shortly. The other one thing I'm going to point out is, you know, with a modern building, you have to have um, you have to have for disability access to comply with building regulations. You have to have a, a level access at the front. Now, when you have a level access at the front, it's very difficult to get this 150 mil drop from outside to inside. And in that particular instance, what most people use is they use as a cross section, typical cross section here. What most people will use is an aqua channel so that if rainwater, it can't drive in, basically it goes into the aqua channel and that stops, um, you know, that should, that should help resolve the problem. So I'm gonna stop this video, that's video one there. I'm gonna stop it here and then I'm just gonna go through the particular problems of your particular building.